Hello everyone, this is Abhishek Mishra from Art Science Classes, Kyonjar. So now we are going to discuss regarding indicatrix and interference figure. So before going to indicatrix and interference figure, we will discuss regarding some basic concepts of optical mineralogy like uh, double diffraction, extinction and interference and then we will go for indicatrix of different type of minerals like uniaxial and biaxial, then we will cover the interference figures of different type of minerals and what is the use of interference figure and then the optic optic sign determination of different type of minerals okay so starting first one is double refraction what is double refraction double refraction means when uh, any anisotropic mineral is there over the microscope and there is an anisotropic mineral so the terms are anisotropic and isotropic so what is isotropic isotropic means uh, the uh, the properties of the mineral the properties of the mineral different properties like optical properties refractive index the velocity of light ray within the mineral okay the properties are same in all direction for a mineral so that is isotropic if that is different in different directions of the mineral that is anisotropic okay so whenever light ray enters an anisotropic mineral what happens it will split up into two rays it will split up into two rays one is uh, continuing the same path as the previous ray you can see here this ray is continuing the same path as the previous ray and another one is deviated another one is deviated from its path after removing from the mineral after going away from the mineral they are parallel they are parallel in propagation they are parallel in propagation you can see here also if this is the mineral this light ray enters the mineral here this is on polarized light ray so here comes a term polarized so what is polarized we are going to see that so when a on polarized light ray enters an uh, anisotropic mineral what happens one ray or one component of that ray it splits up into two component one component that continues the direction that continues in same direction as the previous ray another one is deviated and then continues so both of them are parallel the vibration directions are perpendicular the migrations are parallel and vibrations are perpendicular so what is vibration whenever a light ray is moving in this direction let's consider this is west to east so direction of propagation is from west to east but direction of vibration means the vibration of molecules of the medium right the light ray is not vibrating when light ray passes light ray is an energy okay when it passes through the medium the particles of the medium the, uh, those are going to vibrate so these are vibrating perpendicular to the direction of propagation and that can be in any direction if this is the light direction if this is the direction of propagation of the light ray the vibration can be like this can be like this can be like this anything infinity right infinity number of vibration but those are perpendicular to the direction of propagation so we are denoting the light ray vibration as sine curve you can see that is like sine curve okay all uh, all of equal amplitude okay so that is represented as sine curve so that is the light vibration and that is in many direction so whenever a light ray that enters a uh, mineral the mineral is having some specific property to allow the mineral with a single vibration right before entering any mineral the mineral is having many vibration when it enters a mineral we are going to see in next slide when it enters a uh, mineral what happens after removing away from the mineral it will have single vibration it will have single vibration so here it is polarized and before that that is unpolarized when that is vibrating in many plane when that is vibrating in many plane then that is your unpolarized when that is vibrating in a single plane that is polarized so what happens when a light ray unpolarized light ray that enters an anisotropic mineral it splits up into two rays one is ordinary one is extraordinary ordinary means the ray doesn't have the name of ordinary it is given the name or it is given the component okay that is the ordinary component so why it is named as ordinary component because it obeys Snell's law 
and as I have told that it has continued the same path. Okay. So snail's law. What is snail's law? Sin i divided by sin r is equal to mu. That means sin of angle of incidence divided by sin of angle of refraction will be a constant. So the ordinary ray that obeys the snail's law. So that is ordinary and it is extraordinary because it doesn't obey the snail's law. Okay, so that is extraordinary. Ray. So whenever light ray enters the mineral, it splits up into two components: ordinary and extraordinary. Ordinary obeys Snell's law. Extraordinary doesn't obey Snell's law. Ordinary continues the path. Extraordinary deviates from its path. Then both of them are parallelly migrating, but vibrating perpendicularly. The vibrations are perpendicular. You can see here if this is the vibration of ordinary, this is the vibration of extraordinary, right? So this is known as double refraction. This is known as double refraction. Single ray enter the mineral and remove as double rays or double component. So you can see here, this is the unpolarized light ray that enters the mineral. Here it is calcite. Here it is calcite. When it enters the mineral, what happens? One continues the same path. Another one is deviated from its path. Then both of them are vibrating, sorry, migrating parallelly. Both of them are migrating parallelly you can see here both of them are migrating parallelly but the vibrations are perpendicular but the vibrations are perpendicular you can see here it is vibrating parallel to the board and it is vibrating towards the board that means inside the board and outside the board right so both of them are uh, migrating in a parallel direction but vibrating perpendicular to each other okay so this is your double uh, refraction then we will go to polarization see here on polarized light ray whenever talking about on polarized light ray there is a single direction of vibration uh, sorry a single direction of migration but the vibration is in many direction that is perpendicular to the direction of propagation but can be in any direction okay so this is for on polarized light ray when it enters through a polarizer and removes from the polarizer it will have a single plane of vibration you can see for both of the case the direction of propagation is this one the direction of propagation is same but just the vibrations are reduced to one plane you can see here the example of tourmaline crystal this is tourmaline so every mineral is having its own vibration direction okay whenever the light ray which is on polarized that means you can see here it is vibrating in many direction it enters the tourmaline crystal it removes from the tourmaline crystal its vibration is in single direction and that vibration direction is defined by the uh, vibration direction of the tourmaline crystal which is parallel to c axis for tourmaline crystal the vibration direction is parallel to c axis so it allows the ray only to vibrate in that direction which is parallel to its c axis okay so that is polarization similarly we are talking about calcite we are using calcite as polarizer in microscope so calcite is also a polarizer it is having two vibration directions when uh, before the before this slide i have discussed regarding double refraction so ordinary and extraordinary talking about those rays those are partially polarized whenever that light ray splits up into one ordinary and extraordinary both of them are partially polarized if we are using calcite as a nickel prism right there is some uh, coating black coating is there i will go to uh, i will discuss that uh, how nickel prism works but there it uh, it allow only one ray it allow only one ray so both of them are partially polarized one is remain there and absorbed in the black coating and another one is removed from the calcite so that acts as a polarizer okay now talking about what are the phenomena occurring in a optical microscope so we are going to study optical mineralogy means before that we should know what happens in microscope so see here if that is a unpolarized light ray here it is the stage here it is the 
stays right nothing is there no polarizer is there no analyzer is there what happens the light ray pass through the stage there is no mineral here it is no mineral so the on polarized light ray we can see as on polarized it is vibrating in many directions so we can see white light okay we are providing white light here below the source before there is uh, before the uh, previous in previous case the microscopes are uh, not having any source there is a reflecting mirror right the sunlight falls on the, the reflecting mirror and reflected back to the microscope so then uh, that's why it is known as reflected microscopy okay so here uh, in that case we are using reflecting mirror but nowadays the microscopes are provided with own source that is present below the uh, stage right here it is the illuminating uh, the source it is the source of light here okay in previous case there are, there is a reflecting microscope so what happens we are providing white light that is on polarized light and if there is no uh, no mineral in the stage we can see the on polarized light ray and white ray okay same way we can see if If there is a polarizer, if there is a polarizer, you can see this is a polarizer, you can see the fixed vibration direction or fixed orientation of vibration of the polarizer that is from west to east, okay. The polarizer is, uh, is having its fixed orientation of vibration that is from left right or west to east, okay. When the on polarized light ray enters the mineral, enters the polarizer, what happens? You can see it is vibrating in only that direction which is parallel to direction of vibration of polarizer. Then what happens? If I will insert an analyzer, okay, it is the polarizer, it is analyzer. So what is analyzer? Analyzer is another polarizer. Analyzer is another polarizer but that is used above the stage. Polarizer is used below the stage to polarize the light ray then it falls on the mineral. Here there is no mineral. You can see here there is no mineral. Stage is obviously there but there is no mineral is placed. Okay. Over that there is an analyzer. Analyzer is itself a polarizer. Both of them are nickel prism. Both of them are nickel prism or calcite. Okay. So what happens? The polarizer and analyzer they are having mutually perpendicular direction of vibration. You can see this is having left to right or west to east. This is having north south vibration direction. So both of them are perpendicular. So you can see the light ray that pass through the polarizer that is having a vibration of west to east. But the analyzer it is having a vibration which is perpendicular to the vibration of light ray. So it doesn't allow the light ray to pass through it. Okay, in uh, in this case, in case of polarizer, the light ray is vibrating in many direction. So there is a direction parallel to its axis or its vibration direction. That's why the ray removed as that direction. But in this case, the analyzer is allowing the light ray which is vibrating north south. But here there is no north south component. So that cannot remove from the analyzer. So we can see the darkness in the uh, uh, microscope but we are naming it extinction but here there is no mineral if we will put mineral then we will uh, so other condition when there is extinction when there is interference okay now let's see if I am entering a uh, mineral here right you can see here I, am, I have entered a section here okay that is on polarized in previous case now I have entered the mineral. So the mineral is anisotropic. It should be anisotropic. If it is isotropic, then what happens? The same thing will pass through it because there is no change in properties in every direction. So the same ray that will remove from the isotropic mineral and again the same thing will happen. It will not pass through the analyzer and there will be darkness. Whenever there is anisotropic mineral, what happens? That ray again, so double refraction, it will split up into two rays, one ordinary and one extraordinary okay now this both uh, ordinary and extraordinary that again enters this analyzer that again enters this analyzer what is within the analyzer calcite calcite is there calcite is an isotropic or anisotropic calcite is an anisotropic mineral again So what happens this O ray and E ray that again enter the calcite again this O ray splits up into one ordinary and extraordinary. 
got that that's why i have uh, told in previous case ordinary or extraordinary that is not a name that is a component that is given according to their uh, behavior okay so this ordinary ray which enters the calcite which is an anisotropic mineral that again splits up into ordinary and extraordinary extraordinary ray that enters the calcite that is again divided into ordinary and extraordinary got that they are different rays this different ray when enters the anisotropic mineral calcite they again divided into four rays two rays they will give to two rays uh, each okay two ray uh, two rays they will give two ray each that means four rays then what happens in calcite what happens in nickel prism nickel prism is like this here it is uh, the uh, Canada balsam is there the calcite is con caught in between and it is the Canada balsam here this angle is nearly about 71 degree right when a light ray enters through the calcite mineral what happens one ray pass through it one ray deviated like this then here Canada balsam there is a difference in refractive index between Canada balsam and the calcite mineral so what is the refractive index for Canada balsam 1.54 okay what is the refractive index for uh, calcite 1.1.4 right so what happens when uh, the o ray when the uh, refractive index for calcite that is for uh, different rays right ordinary for ordinary it will have some uh, uh, refractive index for extraordinary it will have some refractive index got that for the mineral the refractive index is defined for two different rays right right for calcite the ordinary is having some uh, uh, refractive index and extraordinary that is having some refractive index so extraordinary i think that is 1.6 or that is uh, i think ordinary is 1.6 ordinary is 1.6 or extraordinary is 1.6 see uh, here it is the phenomenon is occurring total internal reflection right here there is total internal reflection total internal reflection re requires the movement of light ray from denser to rarer from denser to rarer so ordi ordinary will have ordinary will have more because it passed from denser to rarer medium so ordinary should have 1.6 and extraordinary should have 1.4 okay so canada balsam is having 1.5 ordinary when enters from calcite to canada balsam it passed from denser medium to rarer medium because in calcite its refractive index is 1.6 and in canada balsam its refractive index is 1.5 so it is passing from denser to rarer medium then what is total internal reflection you can see this is denser this is rarer this is the normal when light incident on that surface when light incident on that surface what happens the angle of refraction will be higher than the angle of incidence r is greater than i why because it is denser and it is rarer okay so when it continues with increase in angle of incidence at certain angle it will pass through the interface it will pass through the interface at certain angle because I, if i will increase incidence angle of incidence the angle of refraction will increase so at certain angle of incidence the angle of refraction will be 90 degree right here i is equal to c that means critical angle this this is the critical angle when i is greater than c when i is greater than critical angle then what happens it will suffer critical reflection that means the ray will uh, reflect back to the same medium instead of going to other medium right so that occurs when there is movement of denser to rarer medium so when ordinary rate that travels from uh, uh, your denser medium that is calcite to rarer medium that is canada balsam so what happens it will suffer internal reflection or total internal reflection okay so ordinary ray that comes back and absorbed by the black coating here here it is black coating is there to absorb the ordinary ray only extraordinary ray that can pass through the 
calcite. Only extraordinary that can pass through the calcite and remove from the calcite. So this is the uh, mechanism of polarization in case of nickel prism. So let's come to our topic. Yes. So analyzer is calcite crystal that is anisotropic mineral. So what happens? There is two ordinary rays. There are two ordinary rays and there are two extraordinary rays. So what happens? Both of the ordinary rays they will not pass through the analyzer. They they will not pass through the analyzer. So which ray will pass? Only extraordinary. Only extraordinary ray will pass through the uh, analyzer. Then the interference between these two extraordinary ray, they will show us color. Okay. So this is the phenomenon whenever we are talking about a single wavelength of light. Single wavelength means monochromatic, right? Monochromatic means mono means single, chrome means color, one color means one wavelength, right? So whenever we are talking about a single wavelength of light, that means let's say red, let's say green, blue, anything. So one wavelength that will go uh, produce two extraordinary rays after the analyzer. After the analyzer. So what about the seven seven wavelengths that is constituting of white light? White light is having seven wavelengths, right? So for seven wavelengths, it might produce. 14 wavelengths, so, sorry, 14 rays, right? So in each mineral we can see same color, but I am asking a question, whether you can see same color for each minerals, because all of them are producing 14 rays. So we can see each mineral with same color, no, then what is the phenomenon in uh, behind that? What happens? The mineral is having certain vibration direction. I have told you every mineral, every anisotropic mineral that is having certain vibration direction. Okay? That vibration direction is having a resultant. Okay? That vibration direction is fixed for a fixed wavelength. If there are seven wavelengths, the vibration direction is constant. The refractive index is constant for certain wavelength. So there will be two vibration direction and there will be a resultant. There will be a resultant depending upon the uh, retardation. What is retardation? One ray is moving faster, one ray is moving slower. So there is some path difference. There is some difference in path that is retardation. There is some difference in refractive index that is known as by represents. So these properties define which ray will, uh, will be coming out of the analyzer. That property, the retardation and the birefringence, both are related, right? Retardation is related to birefringence. That property relate, uh, that property correlate, or uh, that property define which light ray that will enter the analyzer and can remove from the analyzer. Okay? These two extraordinary ray, that is not for all seven wavelengths for each mineral. Okay? If there are seven uh, wavelengths coming out of a mineral, you can see white color. Okay? But this property, this retardation, this birefringence, this difference in refract index for ordinary and extraordinary ray for different mineral that is different. And that defines which light ray is going to pass through the analyzer, whether that will interfere or that will uh, extinct, whether that will interfere or that will extinct. If that will interfere, interfere means light, some light ray can be passing through the analyzer. Extinct means all of the light ray, they are behind the analyzer. They cannot pass through the analyzer, right? All of the seven rays, they are not, seven wavelengths, they are not passing through the analyzer, okay? For uh, uh, interference, what will happen? If the light ray will go out of the analyzer, if the light rays they are going out of the analyzer, then how much intensity and what are the wavelengths? Not in all case there are 7 wavelengths. Not in all case there are 14 e rays coming out of the analyzer. They can be 14, they can be 12, they can be anything, right? So that depends upon this property of mineral. What is the birefringence? What is the retardation? Okay. So that depends how much rays or what are the rays they are coming out of the analyzer and that depends if they will interfere what color will produce by the mineral that is not the actual color that is where uh, defining the interference color 
इंटरफेरेंस कलर राइट इफ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इंटरफेरेंस कलर वी आर राइटिंग इन द डेफिनेशन दैट इट इज ए फॉल्स कलर इट इज नॉट द ट्रू कलर ऑफ मिनरल द ट्रू कलर ऑफ मिनरल इज डिफरेंट बट दिस फॉल्स कलर इज प्रोड्यूस ड्यू टू द सिलेक्टिव अपियरेंस और सिलेक्टिव पासिंग ऑफ द रेस फ्रॉम द एनालाइजर दैट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मिनरल गॉट दैट कॉन्सेप्ट 